Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa usalli wa usallimu ala al-maba'uthi rahmatan lil alameen Nabiyyina Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa rasulah wa nabiyya Wa qad aqala Allahu tabarak ta wa ta'ala fi al-Qur'an al-Majid A'udhu billahi min al-Shaytan al-Rajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'alamtana innaka anta al-alimul hakim Rabbi shahli sadri wa yasir li amri Wahalul uqdatan min lisani yafkahu qawli Allahumma duatani laik wa ila rasuli kamma ba'd Respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Our non-Muslim friends, may the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty be with you. We would like to welcome each and every one of our viewers, brothers and sisters of our program, Let's Talk Islam with Imran Muhammad. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all with good health and good strength. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your sacrifice and effort to, to sit in your homes and, and listen to the program, Let's Talk Islam with Imran Muhammad. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always bless us with this zeal and, and, and understanding to listen to the program, to learn from the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the so that you and I will become a better individual, a better Muslim. SubhanAllah brothers, we are in the month of Zul Qa'da, which is today is the 14th, the 15th night of Zul Qa'da, which is a sacred and blessed month, and we have been encouraged, you know, to do as much good actions as possible in these months and abstain and stay away for the, the disobedience of Allah or stay away from wrong things that is not liked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do as much good deeds as possible. So these are this is a great opportunity, brothers, that we are having to, to in these blessed months or honorable months or sacred months, you know, we want to use which word that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about in Quran, you know, the four of them, and we are almost half, you know, or half of the month of Zul Qa'dan comes Zul Hijjah. So we encourage the, our viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, that, you know, to do as much good as possible in these months and adhere to the teachings and the orders of your Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Follow the sunnah and practice the sunnah of our beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. So I hope and pray that all of us will, you know, sit comfortable inshallah and enjoy the program. Our program that we have for us tonight inshallah that we all will understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to tell us. And what the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasalam is, you know, his teachings that has been explained to us so that we'll implement it into our lives and become good individuals, inshallah. So as our program begins tonight, we thank Allah first and foremost, and we thank you viewers, brothers and sisters, you know, to, to, to listen because this message is for you and I, both of us, to be benefited uh, or, or have beneficial ilm and knowledge of our deen so that we'll practice it and we'll implement it and we'll bring it into our lives so that we will become better individual. So brothers and sisters, relax inshallah and enjoy our program. As you know, our first and foremost uh, item on our program is that of the Quranic recitation, reciting of verses from the glorious Quran inshallah uh, so that invoke the blessings and the barakah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our homes and our families and all of us insha'Allah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of us for our effort and our sacrifice and bless us all. Sit back attentively brothers and, and sisters and listen to the glorious recitation of the Quran insha'Allah. And as you know when the Quran is being recited, if we cannot recite and follow then we listen, insha'Allah we will get the blessings also and as for those who recite it insha'Allah. So come our, our Quranic recitation. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الرحمن علم القرآن خلق الإنسان علمه البيان الشمس والقمر بحسبان والنجم والشجر السماء رفعها ووضع الميزان ألا تطغوا في الميزان وأقيموا الوزن 
بالقسط ولا تخسر الميزان والأرض ضعها للأنام فيها فاكهة والنخل ذات الأكمام والحب ذو العصف والريحان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان خلق الإنسان من صلصال كالفخار وخلق الجن من مارج من نار فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان رب المشرقين ورب المغربين فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان مرج البحرين يلتقيان بينهما برزخ لا يبغيان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان يخرج منهما اللؤلؤ والمرجان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان وله الجوار المنشآت في البحر كالأعلام فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان كل من عليها فان ويبقى وجه ربك ذو الجلال والإكرام فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان يسأله من في السماوات والأرض كل يوم هو في شأن فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان سنفرغ لكم أيها الثقلان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان الحمد لله brothers and sisters and viewers that is was our recitation of the Quran subhanallah the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as we all this Quran that is there that is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is the final revelation to mankind not Muslims subhanallah so you know I encouraged all of us that we should read the Quran or if not read the Quran listen to the Quran or look at it Look, at that's the Arabic that have been recited and the English, subhanAllah, we should try to learn it and know so we will know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us, subhanAllah, the Quran, brothers and sisters, as the final revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's filled with beautiful advices that you and I could implement into our lives that we will become a better individual, a better human being. Because the teaching is subhanAllah is miraculous. SubhanAllah. If we have some time, spend some time within our day, read the glorious Quran. Listen to the glorious Quran, brothers and sisters. SubhanAllah. Trust me, you will love it. You will love what you are seeing and you will understand what is Allah is telling us. You see, when we recite Quran and when we listen to Quran, brothers and sisters, is actually the word of Allah is being set upon us subhanallah so i hope that you have enjoyed that recitation and inshallah my little advice with regarding to the quran is that let's learn quran let's implement quran in our lives in the life of our children in the life of our entire family inshallah and now brothers and sisters it's our daily reminder inshallah listen attentively and listen to the reminder inshallah assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah to bless every single one of us and grant us goodness. Beloved youth, the first piece of advice I have for you is the advice that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has delivered to us all and that is taqwa Allah. If we are to be conscious of Allah, conscious of our duty unto Allah, the do's and don'ts, and we ourselves 
strive to abstain from prohibition and to fulfill the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it becomes much easier for us to deliver the message with a lot of passion. Whereas if we ourselves are not too regular with our prayers or not too uh, fulfilling of the duties that Allah has placed on our shoulders, it becomes more difficult for us to convey that message in a convincing manner. Secondly, respect yourself, respect everyone around you, respect the fact that you are a Muslim and understand that those who are around you are always in search of goodness and the human mind is extremely inquisitive. So if you keep trying in a very polite way and if you are a person who has wisdom and tact and you understand the norms of the people and you abstain from insulting others, inshallah, it will have a greater impact than if you were to just go out and swear people, insult them, belittle them, make them feel like they are very, very far out of the fold of Islam sometimes, yet they are trying. There is another piece of advice that I wish to deliver, and that is the importance of the scholars of Islam. If we are to visit the scholars of Islam who are promoting the truth once in a while and learn from them, I think, inshallah, people will notice whom we are affiliated to in a greater way and that itself would also be a means of da'wah. What this would mean is, if we are to affiliate with the correct people as far as possible and even if we have had meetings perhaps or we have had associations with those who may not be up to scratch according to what we would believe, uh, we would still be able to clarify such matters and we would still be able to leave a straight line and inshallah a message that will be loud and clear. Why I say this is because as we progress in life, people look to us, they see what we do, they see who we mix with, they see how we associate and they learn a lesson from it. So that association is extremely important. As we grow, we may have to associate with those sometimes uh, who may be searching for the truth in a way that if we mixed with them, it would help them. This is another level on its own. But we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us wisdom, to grant us tact. Remember, I've said this many times and I say it again. Go through the seerah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and study the way he treated the others, the way he spread the message, the way the da'wah at that particular time was delivered. That was the most pristine way. That was the best way. If we are to follow his system and his style and understand what he did, by the will of Allah, we will become better people. The last piece I leave you with is always improve yourself. Don't ever think for a moment, I know everything. Don't be a person who cannot accept correction or who cannot accept some form of rectification. It's important for us to know we will be corrected. We will have to correct ourselves no matter what level you are on. We will learn new things. We must be on the lookout. We must be searching, hunting and making an effort to learn more and to learn new things, to increase our knowledge. And this is why we always say, O oh, you who has bestowed Ibrahim with knowledge, bestow me with knowledge. O oh, you who has bestowed Sulaiman with the understanding, bestow me with understanding as well. And may Allah help us to convey it in a way that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has conveyed it. Humbleness and humility is paramount. We ask Allah to bless us all. Jazakumullahu khaira. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I hope uh, that our brothers and our viewers have enjoyed uh, the, 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 the reminder of our day, inshallah, and please implement it and bring it into practice into our lives, inshallah. Our feature presentation will be by myself, Maulana Hasib Hassan, inshallah. Uh, all of us sit and listen attentively, inshallah, so that we will learn and implement into our lives, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu. Wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati amalina. ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا نبيه ورسوله وقال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب إشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأهل الأبدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم دواتني لي ويلا رسولك ما بعد Respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, brothers and sisters in humanity, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Our non-Muslim friends, our brothers and sisters of different faith, of different religion, may the guidance of God Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be with you. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide you all on the straight path of Sirat al-Mustaqim. Alhamdulillah, brothers. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لِيَنَّهُ مَحْمُودًا عَلَىٰ كُلِّ هَالْ وَهُوَ حَمِيدٌ مَجِيدٌ On all condition, on all circumstance. SubhanAllah, it is very important, brothers and sisters, that we always thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is of the great teachings of our beloved Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, of thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Show gratitude of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with. So we start our advice and exhortation in thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah has given us the opportunity that you and I are in good health and good strength. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us safe and protect us from the sickness and the pandemic of our time, of the diseases of our time. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to protect us and continue to safeguard us insha'Allah. We pray also for our brothers, our sisters, our brethren who have been affected in any sicknesses or any calamities or whatever challenges have been faced them. May Allah. Give them shifa un kamila for, the, for their sickness and ailments. And may Allah give them comfort and peace and relief from their hardships, from their trials, from their difficulties. Indeed, brothers and sisters, we are, as Muslims, as human beings, we are very fortunate that we have life. Life that have been given to you and I, it is a great gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love, when we show that gratitude and we thank Him for this, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Quran that if you are thankful for whatever gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to you, subhanAllah, then Allah will increase that gift to you. And brothers and sisters, we are living in a time that uh, it is important that we as Muslims, as human beings, connect ourselves to the Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty. Connect ourselves towards the teaching of the final messenger Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa rasulah wa nabiya connect ourselves to his advices to the Quran to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for many reasons and one of the reasons is that we'll realize and we'll understand that the time that we are living in the situation that we are seeing the condition that we are witnessing the world in and the countries in subhanallah and the problems that we see throughout the world will have a fair understanding and that of the many prophecies of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he have mentioned that will happen when you and i as individuals and human beings have not been in obedience to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have not been in connection to the book of Allah and what Allah tells us to do and the sunnah of the Prophet what how he have lived and demonstrated that you and I as Muslims as human beings should live remember again brothers and sisters my religion Islam the Quran is not a book for Muslim alone it's for the entire humanity the sunnah of the Prophet and the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as Muslims he is the final messenger of Allah so we believe all the prophets from the Adam alayhi salatu wa sallam coming down to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his message is not for me and you as Muslim alone but the entire humanity the entire nation the entire subhanallah world the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and this is very important for us to understand and realize that that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the prophet of allah and the final of them all and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our creator one god that we all worship and prostrate to subhanallah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam you know once he amongst his companions the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and umar Radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrated a beautiful hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then again, brothers, this is why we should know our deen and know our religion and know this way of life, Islam, because what we are seeing and witnessing, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has prophesied that this is what will happen, subhanallah. And you and I as Muslims, as wise individuals, we could understand the teaching of Allah, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us. So, the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he narrates, he says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, O oh, oh, Muhajireen, Muhajireen is those people that migrated from Makkah to Medina in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the people in Medina were known as the Ansar, the helpers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, 
to the Muhajirin, addressing the, the gathering of his companions. He says, O Muhajirin, he says that uh, there are five things, O Muhajirin, there are five things which the, you will be tested with. There are five things which you people will be tested with. And uh, I pray and I seek refuge lest that you people will live to see these five things. So the Prophet ﷺ is advising his companions. He said there are five things that will be tested. And he prayed that you wouldn't be a part of this test, but these five things will test the people. Now this is general. This the Prophet ﷺ, as he says, O Muhajirin, that refers to them alone. As he, you know, it is the message of the Prophet ﷺ, as I have mentioned brothers and sisters in the beginning, it is for the entire humanity. And the Prophet ﷺ said, O Muhajirin, these are the five things that you will be tested. He says one of the things that you will be tested with is immorality. Being immoral. The, 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 the country, the, the world, the people. Yani, not everyone, obvious. Not every country, not every world. But immorality in different countries and countries of the world. And different people. Immorality. Wickedness. Evil, sin will be prevalent amongst you. It will be so prevalent amongst you that it will be committed openly. The disobedience of Allah. And this is very important. Immorality is sinning. Wickedness, disobeying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will come and it will be openly. Meaning no one will feel ashamed of disobeying so that others will see. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala see. Immorality. So when a time will come that this thing, immorality, the wickedness that we see that is happening throughout our country, in our world, and the world at large, subhanAllah, it is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tell him. And this is the very important part, part for us to understand, is that when these things happen, when these things take place, as we are seeing, wickedness, zina, abundance of uh, alcohol abuse, you know, fornication, adultery, it's so rampant and it's happened so openly that no one cares who is seeing, no one cares who is looking. So Allah says in the open, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that when it opened openly, then plagues and diseases will come amongst you people. Plagues and disease pandemic as we are living in the time of the COVID-19, he said, such sickness will come upon you that you nor your forefather would have ever heard about it before. SubhanAllah. Look at the words of the Prophet Sallallahu When this will happen in the Ummah, as we are seeing the openly, this is what attracts the, 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 the sicknesses and the disease and the pandemic. And this is the word of the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam. SubhanAllah. This is what the Prophet of Allah is telling us. The final revelation to mankind. The Sadiqul Masmuk, the most truthful of those who claim to be truth amongst mankind. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah is the most truthful of all. SubhanAllah. And he says that this is what's going to happen. And this is what brothers and sisters that we are seeing. So much of catastrophes. So much of say, you know, disease that is around us. SubhanAllah. Look how long we are into the COVID-19, the pandemic that is there, the coronavirus. SubhanAllah, look what it is. And this is what, when the, the, the world and the country will become sinful, so much sinful that openly sin is being committed. SubhanAllah, openly sin is being committed. And the Prophet SallAllahu Alaihi Wasallam warned us. He says, this is what will happen, brothers and sisters, when sinning is there. SubhanAllah. Huh? When sinning is there, this is what sickness and calamities and pandemic will come and disease will come upon us that will kill so many people are dying daily in the world with regarding to this sickness. SubhanAllah. And this is what the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam has prophesied. So, you and I as Muslims, as human beings, huh? the remedy to stop this and sickness and, and more to come is for you and I to be obedient to Allah. Is you and I to be modest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Avoid committing sins. Avoid committing disobedience. Why? Because that will attract the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Huh? This is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and this is recorded in the, the teaching of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. So this uh, in sinning, 
subhanallah is what causes these things openly immorality and wickedness causes the pandemic to come upon us subhanallah and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in control brothers and sisters let us try to change ourselves changed we are seeing whatever measures is taken whatever is in place alhamdulillah but we see it still spreading in our country and different countries at large subhanallah it have its its course that is ordained and fixed by allah but you and i need to be more obedient to allah so we could stop these things to come upon us and this is what this hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam or these advices of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is so beautiful brothers and sisters is so beautiful that the Prophet has war for forewarned us and telling us the Muhajibin and the message of meet you and I that immorality, sinning, wickedness is what causes plagues and pandemic and disease to come upon the Ummah, to come upon you and I, subhanAllah, because of the wrong we do. You know, and this this reminds me, brothers and, and sisters and viewers, this reminds me of a beautiful Ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah says, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajeem. Bismillahi rahmani rahim. Zahar al-fasadu fil bawri wal bahri bima kasabat aydin nas. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the appearance of fitna, of problems, of sickness, of disease, of calamities, Zahar al-fasadu fil bawri wal bahri. Upon the land and upon the sea, bima kasabat aydin nas is what men own hands have sent for it. Subhanallah, and this is the word of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Huh? And this is what the Prophet Sallallahu is telling us: when these things happen, when sinning and immorality, this is what will happen. And Allah is saying, when these calamities and sickness come upon us, and when it is on our people, on our nation, our community, the world at large. It is what bima kasabat aydinas is what your own hand has earned is what your own self have done and Allah says liyadiko is that some will taste some will taste what their hand have done subhanallah so not everyone will be inflected with it but some will taste the the the, 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 the punishment of Allah or the, the calamities that is there for what themselves have done subhanallah and this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know tells us in the holy quran and this is what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so brothers and viewers we want a better community a better country to live in free from plagues and sickness stop disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Stop disobeying Allah, start to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and stay away from sin and Allah will remove these plagues and sickness around because this is the, one of the reasons that is caused is because of immorality and sin and wickedness. So if we ease it, inshallah, brothers and sisters and viewers, then Allah will remove it upon us, subhanAllah. Allah will remove it upon us. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we are obedient and when we are torn to Allah, then it attracts the mercy of Allah. When we attract the living light to peace, Allah is attract the mercy of Allah. So if the mercy of Allah is attracted, then this, our sick calamities and sickness will remove the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in charge. So disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what causes many calamities and sickness in our life. And many calamities and sickness in our time. First part of the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Second advice that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam give to the muhajirin and brothers and sisters. Myself, first of all, should try to abstain and stay. We are all human beings. We all make mistakes. We all fall fall short sometimes in our life, in our dealings, and our doings. But subhanallah, we should always turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and try our best to stay away from the disobedience and Allah will guide us and Allah will protect us. The second advice, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he says that when people in business or people in shops, that they will cheat in their measures, they will rob people in their measures when they are Saying, subhanAllah, they are robbing people in their measures and they don't give them the right amount of weight, whether it's in rice and flour or whether it's pound, you have sharted something, you're right as a businessman. The right measure is not being given to the, the purchaser that is buying. The Prophet sallallahu says, they do not cheat in weight and measure, but they will be stricken with famine. They will be stricken with severe calamities and oppression from their leaders. Subhanallah. 
Look at the words of the Prophet The Prophet said that when people will cheat in a way, <coughs> excuse me, when people will cheat in their measurements, they will short the right weight to give to another person. The Prophet said then famine will come upon them. Calamities will come upon them. And oppression, they will have oppression from their leaders. SubhanAllah. Oppression meaning that the one that is in charge of them will be oppressive upon them. And this is, SubhanAllah, look at our time, look at our country, look at the world. SubhanAllah, look at our leaders, how corrupt they are. Look at our leaders, how much oppression that they are given upon the people that they govern. SubhanAllah. When we are in charge, Islam teaches us, when you're in charge of a people, the people, you are their kadim, you are their servants, because you serve them, and you look after their needs and affairs as their leaders. SubhanAllah. Well, look at the leaders of our world today, and the country that we lived in, and the different parts of the world. SubhanAllah, they're oppressed upon those that are under them. SubhanAllah. Their oppression, they misuse their office. SubhanAllah. They use it for themselves and their own whims and fantasies. Forgetting the needs of the people. SubhanAllah. And this is what the Prophet wasalam, taught us. This happened when you and I as businessmen or you and I that do a business, we are deceiving in what we do. And when we are deceiving in what we do, Allah says, the Prophet wasalam, says that famine will come in a drought. Famine, famine will come upon you. SubhanAllah. Calamities, sicknesses will come upon you. SubhanAllah. And importantly, oppression from your leaders. You will have a bad leader that will govern you. They will always be oppressive upon you. SubhanAllah. You know, SubhanAllah, one great Malik bin Dinar. SubhanAllah. Malik bin Dinar. He have mentioned in, he have read in one book, Malik bin Dinar, a great, uh, a great scholar or a great awliya waliullah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. SubhanAllah. He says that he have read that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he is the king of all kings. He is the ruler of all rulers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says that if mankind, you make Allah happy or you're happy with Allah, you're obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be happy with you and Allah will put or make the hearts of your ruler, the hearts of your kings, the heart of your leader soft towards you. SubhanAllah. Beautiful words of Malik bin Dinar, the great, you know, uh, saint of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a friend of awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says that if you and I, we obey Allah, we are respectful to the duties and the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we fulfill our responsibilities to Allah, he says that Allah will love us, and Allah will make our leader's heart soft towards us, subhanAllah. But if we disobey Allah, if we does not obey Allah, and we does not fulfill our duties towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he says that Allah will make the hearts of our ruler, the hearts of our king, hard against us, subhanAllah. So they will be tyrant upon us. That is why the Prophet sallallahu used to always make the dua. You know, he said, Ya muqallib al -kuloob. He says, oh Allah, Ya muqallib al -kuloob. you're the torrents of hearts. You're the controllers of hearts. And look at this here. That if we are obedient to Allah, those that are above us, those in authority over us, our leaders, our kings, our rulers, Allah will make their hearts soft towards us. SubhanAllah, brothers. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us. And if we does not obey Allah, then Allah will make their hearts, SubhanAllah, hard upon us, meaning that they will oppress us. They will be tyrant upon us. They will misuse their office and misuse the rights that they have and misuse it upon you and I, subhanAllah. Abuse it. They will take advantage. And this is what we are seeing in many parts of the world. <coughs> many different countries. The oppression of their leaders upon them, subhanAllah. And the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa tells us when this will happen, when they will be deceptive in trades, when they will be deceptive in business, then Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, will cause this. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause this to be upon you and I. Subhanallah. And this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about in Quran also. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks in Surah Mutafifin, in the, the 30th para. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about these things. Allah says, Wailun lil mutafifin. Allah says, Woe to those who give less measures. Those who give less measures, meaning decreased in. SubhanAllah, so you buy a pound and they give you an ounce short. SubhanAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Woe to those who have done this. SubhanAllah, when Allah use woe in the Quran is that the azab and the punishment of Allah upon such individual is that they do that, SubhanAllah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us with regarding to that way, you and I, we could make a difference, brothers and sisters, businessmen, do the right thing in your business and your trade. So, you know, when you sell, sell properly, don't short, uh, you know, the, 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 the commodities of a person when they paid you for a full amount, subhanAllah. And this is what causes our leaders, this is what causes, you know, those in authority above us, subhanAllah. And if we want them to, to come back to us and, and have soft hearts to us, meaning that they will respect and treat and fulfill the rights of those who they govern, then subhanAllah, we need to go back to loving Allah and respect Allah and do the things that Allah wants so that Allah will place that in their hearts, subhanAllah. We need that. Brothers and sisters, we need to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to connect ourselves to Allah, God Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the teachings of our beloved Prophet, alayhi salatu wa salam. We need to, brothers and sisters. If we don't, this is why you will see so much of problems and difficulties in our countries, so much of hardship. And you know, the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when sinning, you know, will be openly done. When the disobedience of Allah, wickedness, immorality, then Allah will place leaders upon you who will be tyrant upon you, who will be oppressive upon you, who will be, subhanAllah, taking advantage upon you that, in our words, subhanAllah. And this is what we are seeing. And in order to change these things, brothers and sisters, we need to go to the obedience of Allah. We need to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's only Allah will set our affairs right. SubhanAllah. We have seen that. Leaders who we have trust, leaders who we have put our reliance on, SubhanAllah. Look at their condition, look at the state of our country and the countries of the world. It's because of, SubhanAllah, not connecting to Allah and sinning that has been committed. So we need to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to, to, who, to go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, brothers, and sisters continue in the hadith, the five advices that the Prophet ﷺ gave the Muhajirin. He says that the third advices, the Prophet ﷺ says, he says that when people will withhold their zakat, as Muslims we pay zakat, that is our charity that has been given upon our wealth, when it has reached an amount or a nisab, we give two and a half percent that belongs to the poor and the needy that purify the wealth of a Muslim. SubhanAllah. From our, all that we have, Two and a half percent we will give every year to the poor and the needy. The Prophet sallallahu said that when it will be held back and when it will be hold back and people will not give in, he says the withhold Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will withhold from the sky rain. Allah will withhold from the sky rain. Rain would have not fall upon them, subhanAllah. And then the Prophet wasallam said also, had it not been for the animals, then no rain at all would have come upon them. It's just that the animals that are in the obeying of Allah, they need that to save and survive. And when this will happen, when people will not, as Muslims, will not give their zakat, which is due right to the poor and the needy, it's oppression against the poor and the needy, when we have and we don't give because that, as Muslims, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Numerous places in the Holy Quran about wa'atu zakat and give your zakat, give to the poor and the needy, the orphan, the, you know, etc. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Holy Quran, give to them. If we don't give to them, subhanAllah, then Allah will withhold rain upon them. Rain is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a farm, our crops, for waters, etc. SubhanAllah, if we don't do this, then brothers and sisters, subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will withhold the rain from us. Ah, subhanAllah. So we need to, you know, get in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fulfill our duties and responsibility to Allah. The fourth one, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when they will break their covenant 
with Allah and his messenger, Allah will enable their enemies to overpower them. Subhanallah, enemies will overpower you when you does not fulfill your command to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The covenant that you make to Allah of obeying Allah and worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the fifth one, he says their leaders, if their leaders does not rule according to the book of Allah and the guidance of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, subhanallah, Allah will cause them to fight one another. This is a very, very important want to learn subhanallah if leaders and rulers does not rule according to the laws of allah then allah will cause them to fight amongst one another and brothers and sisters this is what we are seeing in the world today subhanallah so much of fighting amongst our leaders that is there subhanallah they fight amongst themselves is because they have not ruled with the order of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so these are the advices of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a nutshell brothers and sisters is that in order to attract the mercy of allah to be saved from our challenges and our calamities that is around us is that we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do the things that please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you and I will be safe from the sickness and the challenges of our time and we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us and guide us all on the straight path of Sirat al mustaqim in such a way that we will be pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our time so we cannot explain it more but inshallah in our next program I pray that Allah help us to understand these that we implement these goodness in our life and stay away from the evil and the wrong and the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may Allah bless you all and accept all of you all until our next program may Allah keep you safe and may Allah keep you with peace comfort and tranquility. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. That was our future presentation there. I hope and pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all to understand what has been said so that we will implement it into our lives so that you and I will become better, better individual in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Stay away from the disobedience and the sinning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will help us to attract the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This come to the end of our program. Uh, we pray that Allah accept all of us and bless us all. We pray that Allah bless our sponsors, all of our sponsors, all of them who have sponsored or make it possible for our program to be aired. May Allah bless them and their families and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them peace and comfort and tranquility and safety at all times from sicknesses and challenges and calamities. And please do support their businesses, you know, because they are the one that have made this possible by their, you know, contribution towards this and contribution towards uh, the spreading of our Islamic ilm and our Islamic knowledge in supporting our program Let's Talk Islam with Imran Muhammad. Inshallah, we will pray and Allah bless all of them and bless all of us. Inshallah. Wa akidah wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. يا ربي بجاه النبي أزيح الغمة يا ربي Now you can really go shopping in Lenora at VNP Supermarket 20 North Lenora Public Road. Come in and enjoy great prices on the widest range of groceries, beverages, frozen meats and vegetables and ice cream too, even food for your pets. Get detergent and bathroom soaps and cleaners, the full range and all the brands. Pots and pans for the kitchen, cutlery and crockery for dining. And all the household items you need to make home so comfortable. The ladies will love our cosmetics collection perfect for gifts for special occasions and just what you promised yourself. V&P Supermarket 20 North Lenora Public Road, West Coast, Demerara. Gönlerde hasretin var Yürekler aşkınla çarpar Sensiz dünya bizlere dar Selam sana ey kutlu yar With submission, faith and patience You 